up and now, yeah. Make all the demons quiet, yeah. We were built to thrive, yeah. I think that we've all had enough. What keeps you up and now, yeah. Make all the demons quiet, yeah. We were built to thrive, yeah. Pero que está todo inundado. No me jodas. Y riachuelo aquí. Madre mía. Aquí me da la vuelta yo. Mira que está Mira la calle aquí, colega. I think it is safe now. There doesn't seem to be any storm around. Welcome to the patio. What a week. Well, let me qualify that. What a past four days that we have had here. And I don't want to take away from anybody that is struggling with Milton or Helene because I still have a roof over my head. Know that my thoughts and prayers are with everybody still dealing with the aftermath. There is absolutely no doubt. But I do want to point out that our infrastructure here in southern Spain is not geared for what you just saw, which was only 48 hours and there was another 48 hours after that of the same conditions. We do not have the huge storm drains and when we get 27 liters of rain within a single hour and that on a consistent basis, well, that is going to cause some problems to say the least. Again, my thoughts and prayers are with everybody affected by the hurricanes and I sincerely hope that you are able to recover from the stress and that every single measure of support comes your way so that the coming holiday season isn't as upsetting as what you have just been through. My patio was inundated. I had a small water feature coming through the patio and well, indoors, Never mind, but you can just imagine, I guess, use your imagination. And I'm sounding a little bit subdued because it was just something that put into perspective what others are dealing with as opposed to what I was going through. I kept telling myself that I'm still standing, sort of. My plants are okay, sort of, for the most part. And I really shouldn't be doing a video about, ooh, look at how much rain we've had, etc. And that's not what this is about. But I do want to share my emotions and my thoughts when it comes to what we are not used to. And then knowing that there's people, friends, etc. out there on the roads, on the streets, having to come home after a long day's work. You know, the worry is there. The build-up from watching the hurricanes develop, watching Helene doing damage, watching Milton coming in, knowing that there's a lot of friends in the path. And then this was going on a couple of days after that. The whole thing was just a build-up of concern after concern after concern. And then all of a sudden, here comes the sun. Da -da -da -da. It is so hard to describe. It is hard to come down from what we could consider a high, so to speak. But not for all the right reasons. Adrenaline can be good as well as bad. And the adrenaline in the past three weeks has just been exponential for all the wrong reasons. Let me just say the silver lining for my patio is that all the orchids could stay outside because the temperatures were somewhat adequate. My major concern was the wind because, well, I'm so glad I did tie that banda totem pole up. 
but this is something that is just not the norm for southern Spain. I cannot emphasize that enough. Another silver lining is we've got a lot of water. I hope most of it was also directed into the reservoirs that are, you know, a quarter empty. They could have done with a lot of everything that was coming down our street. It was like swimming upstream for the cars that could still make it. And of course, my fowls could be outside to enjoy all of this. My fowls were exposed to these conditions for 72 hours as well, and they have since dried out miraculously. <laughs> I apologize for rambling. I'm just a little bit overwhelmed and I'm grappling for all the silver linings, but my mind at the moment is drawing a blank. So while I did some damage assessment or hoping not to have any damage at all, when you saw all the pots brimmed full, they were actually overflowing. That is not normal. We can have a lot of rain and still my pots might only be a quarter full or half full, but not to the point of overflowing. Needless to say, of course, I'm going to use all this rainwater. The cleaning of the masks has begun in preparation for the winter season. Just the really, really bad, yucky looking ones. I'm not going to go and clean all of the masks. Those that look somewhat okay, they're just gonna have to do because in all of this, during these rainy days, I was actually going to clean the indoor winter holding space, which didn't happen because I was busy trying to make sure that not too much of the mud and the water came into the property. So that was almost a 24 seven task. And now I'm a little bit stressed when it comes to cleaning the indoor holding space while still putting out content. Oh my goodness, like I said, my brain is just all over the place, which is not a good thing should this be your first time on my channel. I am not usually like this, but I am not going to try in this video just to be like, yeah, everything's great. <laughs> it wasn't. <laughs> it hasn't been. So welcome to the channel if this is your first time. Know that this is not the norm for me, but there comes a time when even my transparency when it comes to growing my orchids turns out to be transparency as to how I'm feeling. <laughs> just so happens we have a little bit of a combination of both right here right now. But I digress, I got sidetracked there. Anyway, what I wanted to show you, which I thought is super interesting, and I don't get to see this very, very often. This is only something that happens when it rains a lot, a lot, a lot, and usually in combination with extremely high humidity. But I did manage to capture some images of what happens to orchid roots as they grow me and belayman, me and orchid roots, me and watching them develop, trying to understand them and being just totally fascinated by them. But anyway, what you are looking at is a new root of my Jumelia aborescence, brand new out of the stem. So let me just add a little bit of fun information here, at least fun for me. What you're seeing is not water droplets, even though that's what it looks like. It is not. So let me just explain this. The root tip comprises of cells that are similar to those of the cortex, even if not the exact same type of cells as the cortex. So if you were to feel the root tips, and usually you can't see it, this is what makes these images so fascinating to me. But sometimes you will feel how slick and slimy a root tip can feel. That slimy feeling comes from the mucilage that surrounds the root tips and comprises of dead root tip cells. So the root tips are the ones that collect the majority of the water and nutrients as the velamen has not yet established, creating that barrier, that white that we usually see on the part of the root that is older. And the root tips, as we know, are also the most sensitive part. And because the tips do not have any developed velamen, they will be the first to burn. I have seen this gel-like substance on many of my roots and I have felt it, especially when I was repotting orchids that came new to my collection from a humid environment like a greenhouse. It's just that I have never been able to photograph it as clearly as this in the past. And back then when my orchids arrived in the collection, I did not have a YouTube channel, so I didn't think there was a need to. That's why I'm loving these images now. And also, the bigger the root is in circumstances like these, the more you can tell what you are looking at, small roots, fine roots, you can only feel that slime. 
just a little side note, muy importante. When repotting orchids, please do not make a conscious effort to remove that slippery texture, thinking that it is a problem and needs to be dealt with. It is not snail slime, not to be confused with snail slime. It feels exactly the same, but it is not. Instead, the moment you feel some form of slime when addressing a root tip, back off and leave it as undisturbed as possible. So there's that. I just hope that you found that interesting because, like I said, silver linings, they are all around us. I just had a little bit of a hard time <laughs> looking for them, but eventually I settled down. My brain settled down and I was just glad there was a single pot that had fallen off the shelf and broken only a fraction, but the orchid is fine. I was not expecting the deluge that came. 48 hours hadn't filled my pots. 72 hours of of this had flooded pots. So I had a lot of pots that were still in their masks and then I was frantically one morning while it was still raining pulling orchids out of their masks in the hopes that any new growths wouldn't be affected. I'm hoping to have gotten away with it because of course the rain continued while the new growths had been submerged and well only time will tell whether these growths are going to be okay or not. While I was taking this footage, of course, it wasn't raining, otherwise my camera would have crackled, snapped and popped. But everything you see here has not had a chance to dry out for 72 hours. If you are seeing any pots that possibly show signs of rotting pseudobulbs, that is an issue. We're going to have to address that. But my strategy in addressing that is not to go all in right now. I'm going to allow everything to dry out. Then I'm going to watch and observe and see how things progress, decline, or maybe manifest themselves into something that could be detrimental. Especially those repots where I had divided and split and put lots of pieces into a single pot. Those are the worst looking at this point in time. But I figured, you know what, I still have enough orchids left. <laughs> I'm not going to lose them all because of this. So my channel is not exactly at risk. It's just that now maybe we can have a teachable moment based on how much risk I put into having my orchids drenched in this torrential rain for such an extended period of time. And if you would like to be around for that, consider subscribing to the channel. That would be amazing. And a thumbs up would be greatly appreciated as well. I can see some of my Phalaenopsis are almost blown out of their pots. That would need addressing, but some of these Phalaenopsis are going to be rehomed, so maybe this is a blessing in disguise. I can just take them out of the pot without having to do anything major and give them to their new owners. And there was one little mini fowl that I saw that needed addressing straight away that has been dealt with. It just needed some correction and I just needed to repot it in order to ensure that the aerial roots are in the pot because I had not been taking good care of it during the summer months and it lost the roots in the pot because I let the pot dry out for far too long. Now we watch and wait. And as I'm going around here with you, oh, all these new growths that I'm looking at, I'm just hoping that they'll be okay. I can see a classic example of a pot that I forgot in all of this. It was tucked way back and underneath other pots, so I didn't think it would flood. I just left it and, well, this is the Sologeny division that you see here. And the new growth is completely submerged at the base. This is no bueno. Sologenies are hot to warm growers and here it is underwater. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just going to address that very quickly and I'm not even going to touch the new growths on my Coilostylus ciliaris because they are happy sap producing orchids and the sticky happy sap now with all the liquid and all the water that everything has absorbed, if I touch that I could damage any of the cells that still need to harden off when it gets a chance to dry out. So whew, this is like, is this risk reward or is this a risk? And then you're going to regret it. Time will tell. But there's something to be said to see all these roots completely saturated. I absolutely love this. So I'm just going to enjoy the moment for now. And then I'll worry about the result, the outcome afterwards, should there be any, of course, I'm hoping not. It's just that rarely in Spain do I get to have my orchids soaked, drenched with the high humidity over a consistent period of time while the temperatures are favorable. 
usually I'm struggling to keep my orchids hydrated with sufficient humidity and to see roots completely saturated like this, my mister wouldn't be able to do this unless I spent an hour misting an orchid to get a result like this. I can tell you that I thoroughly enjoyed seeing my east side table completely full of orchids that are absolutely enjoying this kind of weather. And my Ancelia Africanas, they have been fertilized so heavily during the summer months that I couldn't even keep up with flushing. So this was just absolutely wonderful to see. And I could just let them go. They were heavy enough. There was nothing that was destroyed on this table. Nothing blew off. Every orchid here held its own. The one thing that I was concerned about, I had my OG Ancelia Africana on the top shelf of that east rack that I have and it was at an angle where yes water could actually pour into it it was also completely flooded there was lecker everywhere that had poured out of that pot so <laughs> I was crawling around with my tweezers picking up lecker wherever I could find it look I'm again I'm not complaining all right I'm just showing you what has been going on on the patio and this is the result when the sun shines. I feel good about it. But with orchids, you never know. What looks wonderful now, maybe in a week, it's going to tell you it was a big mistake. I have no fear for my Ancelia Africanus. What has surprised me, however, is my Sologeny that we saw the division of just now in that flooded pot. After the division, it has matured the new growth that was actively growing when we did the division, and it's brought out another new growth. This orchid was just repotted in the summer of 2024, and here we are in October of 2024. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this monstrosity, apart from bring it indoors for the winter, but two new growths after a repot. Maybe, just maybe, I made it very, very angry. It is so nice to see every pot filled to the brim. <laughs> Orchids were protected on the east side rack because I've got some spikes and a first time bloomer tucked away in there. I didn't dare bring them out for a flush because if something were to fall out of the sky and break a spike, it is hard enough for me at the moment to get something to bloom out nicely and I was hoping that these orchids would eventually show us some blooms. <laughs> And a first-time bloomer, of course, seeing as the temperatures drop so radically, the Tenebrosa, it's very slow to open that bud. Fingers crossed, I would just love to see that bloom, even if it doesn't last long. That would be another milestone on the patio. Unfortunately, Stan the man could not enjoy any of this rain. I have nothing infrastructure-wise that would be able to hold him in place on the patio and be exposed to the rain. So yes, I was standing on the chair and watering him every day in the pouring rain. It's such a shame. This orchid would have absorbed that water like there's no tomorrow. And it was just, oh, I just felt so bad for Stan. But anyway, moving on. Immediately, the new curtain protection has gone up because <laughs> that sun is still beautifully warm and well you can see the state of him he is pretty much exhausted from the heat and the dry air and also his large leaves are exposed to the direct sun because the towel just didn't cut it anymore so this contraption is going to have to do <laughs> Oh, another orchid that was flooded that I didn't realize is my Colmenara Masai Red. All the way up to the pseudobulbs, completely flooded. They were submerged in water. And then you can see my beautiful, what once was a water feature, all that debris as it was washing through the patio. I hope I got away with this one. And in the process of lifting the mask out of the pot, no matter how careful I was, knowing the history of the Cymbidium and the fires, yep, the pot is broken. Ah, anyway, <laughs> this is what is blessing me in my blooming alley, just to take a little bit of a breather. And then um, if you want to look away, please give me about five seconds. I'm going to show a picture. Now, this guy showed up as well, and he spanned the length of five pots. I had gone to sniff my Lelia perinii that day. Talk about scream. Anyway, you can look now. That slithering long thing has left the screen. I have not seen a snake on the patio for three
three years, and while I'm futzing around with my orchids, sniffing my Lelia perinii, getting orchids back into the mask, that thing was lying there all the time. Mm, I can't tell you how I felt about that. Now, I grew up in Kenya. Yes, in Kenya, I expect snakes. I'm prepared to see them. I'm prepared for any kind of sporadic appearance of a snake, especially when I was up in the trees with my orchids. And in Kenya, yes, snakes are venomous, but at the time, you know, child, no fear, who cares, blah, blah, right? Yeah, well, I'm an adult now, and I have an issue. I am in southern Spain. <laughs> And you just don't belong in this part of the patio. So I don't know where that thing is. I tapped it with a long phalaenopsis stake and it slithered away. Ew, and I don't know where it is now. So I am closely monitoring Siliano's cage, making sure that he's going to be okay. But I was not okay. Like I said, I've had quite the week. <laughs> I think we could all do with a little bit of a break so that everything can fall back into place the way it should be in order for us to get a breather. Once again, I'm thinking of you if you're affected by Helene. I'm thinking of you if you're affected by Milton. Know that I am thinking of you. I'm not sitting here trying to sound, oh, woe is me. I am just expressing what went on here and I appreciate it if you are still watching this video all the way to the end, listening to me babble. My head is pretty much all over the place. And if you're still here, thank you for joining me. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you for supporting me. I so appreciate you. I cannot say if normal service will resume because I don't know what's quite normal at the moment anymore. But always know that I try not to put what I'm going through on you. That's not what my channel is about. However, every once in a while, there comes a time where I'm just like, oh, I need to talk about this. <laughs> So once again, thank you so, so much for watching. I appreciate you. I wish you a wonderful day. And as always, I say it, I mean it. I add a condition to that, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye. What keeps you up at night, yeah? Make all the demons quiet, yeah? We were built to thrive, yeah? I think that we've all had enough. What keeps you up at night, yeah? Make all the demons quiet, yeah? We were built to thrive, yeah?